Welcome back to Millie Cockapoo. Today's video is going to be a bit of a story time on Millie's grooming experience so far. This video is going to be the first one in a series as we carry on our journey of grooming. And when I talk say grooming, I specifically mean her going to the groomers. So if you didn't already know, cockapoos need to go to the groomers every six to 12 weeks because the hair grows that quickly and you need to get it cut to prevent the matting as well as you also brushing it at home. And this week Millie went to the groomers and let's just say it wasn't an easy trip getting into the groomers and I'll go into more detail later on in the video on what happened. But starting from the beginning, from the day Millie came home I've worked on desensitising her to pretty much everything, especially having her paws touched, her eyes cleaned, ears cleaned, um, touching her teeth, her gums, basically every part of her body so she wouldn't mind me touching them. And even though I've done that from day one, she still doesn't like having her front paws touched because they're very ticklish and under her front armpits because that's a very sensitive area for puppies. But it's also where she gets a lot of her matting. Also from the day that she's come home, I've worked on brushing her and getting used to being brushed, having baths at home, hair dryer, which again, she's not a big fan of, um, but trying to get her ready for her first trip to the groomers. So her first trip to the groomers was at 18 weeks old. And by that point, she was desperate for a groom. I will insert a picture here of what Millie looked like at that point. And I loved her long locks at the time, but she couldn't really see, to be honest with you. And I was petrified of cutting her eyes. I did it once before and she just kept moving. Yes, yeah, she did. So I didn't really want to do it again. And also I'd heard that you're better off taking them in for puppy grooms so they get used to the groomers. And in a puppy groom, they just trim around their eyes, clean their ears, cut the paws, um, trim like the bums and like the private areas. Basically just give them a tidy up. They don't do a full cut. Um, and sometimes they'll give them a bath as well. So at 18 weeks old, I booked her in to go for a puppy groom. Now this puppy groom was booked for two days before we were going into our second national lockdown here in England. So this was in November. And I dropped off at the groomers and then when I came to pick her up, she'd had a full groom already. And the groomers reasoning for giving her a full groom was because we was going back into lockdown, she didn't know if we could, she would be able to stay open and she presumed she wouldn't be able to because groomers hadn't been able to stay open in the first lockdown and she didn't know how long the lockdown was going to last for. So they'd given a date of a month, but we didn't know if that was going to get extended. So she thought it was the best thing to just give Millie a full groom so then she would last longer. Because with puppy grooms, you have got to take them back on a regular basis. But the positive side to having to go back on a regular basis is that they get used to the groomers and the environment. Whereas Millie just got chucked in at the deep end into industrial baths, hair dryers, and got forced to have a full groom within a two hour space. And at the time she was completely fine. She was really excited to see me when I picked her up. And I didn't really think anything about it. I just thought, oh, she'll be fine. Then a few months later, she went back again. And because she'd already had a full groom the first time, she just had a full groom the second time. There was no point in then her having a puppy groom. And that time she was a bit upset leaving me, but she went in okay. And she's always a bit of a clingy dog and not doesn't like me leaving her. But once I've gone, she's fine. She'll get over it and she'll just be happy with whoever she's with or on her own. So the third time she went, she was about six months old because she was getting appointments every eight weeks. And that time when I went to drop her off, she realised where she was. So the groomers that I'd been taking her to, there's a car park on the side and you have to walk. It's only a two minute walk and it on the main road to go through the entrance and when as we turned the corner onto the main road obviously staying on the path and um, she realized where she was and she did get a bit nervous but I managed to coax her into the shop and then once where I was in there and she realized that I was taking off the lead and that she, I was going she had a little bit of an accident at the time I didn't really think anything of it because she hadn't been to the toilet before we left, even though I'd taken her out into the garden, she just wouldn't go. So I presumed it was because she actually just needed a wee, and because she hadn't been before, that was why she had the accident. And she was upset because I was leaving her. Then at 35 weeks, I took her in for her fourth groom. And we did the same as normal, parked in the same car park, 
this time we rounded the corner, she instantly knew where she was and where she was going and she freaked out. And in a matter of seconds, she pulled out of a collar. That's why I'm left stood with her collar and her lead. And it, God knows how she got out of the collar because it was so tight. Like I can barely get one finger underneath and it's tight putting it on. So I don't know how she managed it, but she was honestly so petrified that she wanted to do anything to get away from where she was going and she ran into the main road. This is all in the matter of seconds. I'm then running out into traffic to try and stop them. And luckily a bike stopped and helped me get her back into the car park. Other cars didn't stop, even though I'm sitting there screaming in the middle of the road, which probably wasn't the best reaction from me to get her to come back to me. But even though she's got really good recall, she was in flight or fight mode. And she just wanted to get out of there as quick as possible. And no amount of recall would help in that situation. And then luckily she was only in the road for a couple of minutes. It probably wasn't even that long, but it felt like that long. And then I managed to get back into the car park where there was a couple of guys there who managed to get her back to me. And then I had to carry her into the groomers. And I was completely shook up because she'd just run into the middle of the road. And she was shaking like a leaf in my arms, especially as I was getting closer to the groomers because she knew where she was going. Looking back, I probably shouldn't have left her there, but I was in such a panic mode of, I needed to get her to this appointment, she needed grooming, she'd just run out in the road, what to do? So I just dropped her off and I took her to her groomers. And it wasn't until I got home and started thinking about how she'd been at the past experiences that I realised that she was giving me warning signs all along, that she wasn't happy there, like something was going off. Then when I went to pick her up from, from the groomers, she couldn't wait to get out of there. And she ran to me, was excited to see me, and then she was pouring at the door to get out. And I have never seen her do that somewhere. Normally she's really happy and calm and chill. And then I paid her and left. It's only since being back at home and speaking to other people on the Instagram page who gave like great advice and I've been looking at all different harnesses and leads and different attachments that you can get to stop her from being able to get out a collar again or a harness um but then I was looking at the reasoning why did she get so freaked because she would never run off from me before something has set her off so then I've spoken to a few people and then I started contacting other groomers and told them what happened from what everyone's been saying we think Millie's had a bad experience with grooming because she got thrown into having a full groom at such a young age she never got time to get to know the groomer get used to the new sights and environments and smells because it is an industrial setting it's completely different to being at home she was just chucked into this big industrial setting and then she wouldn't have liked it the first time. She would have been moving and irritating. And the groomers, because they've got a job to do, she would have just hold her in place and like made a deal with it. I, I think that's had a negative experience on Millie and what has caused her to freak. Now, I'm basically having to go back to stage one. So I'm swapping groomers. Everyone I've spoken to has said that that is the best thing to do because she'll always associate that groomers with the bad experience and the bad memories. It'll be harder to get her to like that groomers than it will be for her to get used to a new groomer and it'll always be positive memories and realise that it's a good place. The groomers that I've chosen, I've spoken to them on the phone, we're going to have some drop-in visits where she's going to go in, meet the groomers and they're going to like just touch her paws and see what areas she doesn't like and let her just wander around and see the sights and smells. And depending on how well she does, they'll build her up to a point where she can then go for a groom. Depending on how well she does in the grooming process, they might have to split it up in sections. So one day do a bath and a brush out, then the next day go take a bath for a cut. And it might be months of work from both my side and the groomers for her to get her used to it again. And I realise that it's not a bad place to go and that it can be enjoyable. But because of the breed that she is and she's having to get her groomed on the regular basis, we can't have her freaking out every time. She needs to enjoy it somewhat. I'm hoping by telling you this story that if you've got a young puppy that's ready to go for their first groom, 
do a bit more research into your groomers. I just looked for one that was local on Facebook and yes, it has good reviews, but I didn't really ask them any questions other than that because I, I trusted the good reviews online. You need to make sure that your puppy has puppy grooms and that they don't just have a full groom first off because that will potentially cause them to have problems later like on and bad associations with it. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this will most likely be a series because I'll do another video after maybe she's had one or two drop-in visits. Like I've said, if you take anything from this video, it's if you've got a young puppy, make sure they only have puppy grooms the first couple of times and they don't have a full groom because then you might end up in the same situation as me where your dog's running into a main road. And we were very lucky that nobody was hurt and that she was completely safe because she could have easily got hit by a car. I hope you enjoyed this somewhat gloomy video of how our grooming experience has been, but I hope it helps some of you, especially if you've got the young puppies. And I don't think we're the only one who will have had experiences like this as well with groomers because it can take a while to, for you to find a groomer that is right for you and your dog. If you don't subscribe already, then please make sure that you do and you turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss a video from us. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And follow us over on our Instagram at Millie Cockapoo for daily updates and you get to see more of Millie, where she's not just sleeping on my lap down here. And then please let me know in the comments below if you've got any advice on how to get her used to being groomed again or if you've had similar issues with your dog going to the groomers as well. Thank you for watching. Bye. Does anybody else randomly feel the dog's paws and then notice mud in there and then have to get it out? <laughs> I feel like I spend all my time doing this now. She just loves digging. Right, it's done, we're done. Oh, thank you. And, oh yeah.